Welcome to Virtual Church. We are so happy to have you with us. I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm thrilled that I'm here. Good to be together, isn't it? I'm going to talk this morning uh, about something that comes out of the work of Emma Curtis Hopkins, who is one of our teachers. And Emma uh, talks about this idea of a river within the heart. And I think this is just such an interesting idea that I've been trying to wrap my head around it all week long. So let me share with you. Emma says that there is a river within the depth of the heart, clear as crystal, which if it were set flowing, would dissolve the sorrows, the pain, and the poverty of the world. And she goes on to say that it is a clear water of noble purpose. A purpose is that which we have resolved to do and be. So as soon as I say that, I think about the wonderful words of Howard Thurman, and where he talks about keeping fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. That this is maybe another way of saying uh, a clear water of noble purpose. Uh, so what would a possibility of purpose be for us? So in thinking about this, I think, well, my purpose is to live and demonstrate faith in God. Or my purpose is to love as God loves. Or my purpose is to express everything that is within me. Well, you know, so, so Emma says that if, now this is really, really fascinating, that if just a very few people would mean exactly what they say when they are praying, she says that their meaning would dissolve the sickness, melt away the wrongs, make straight through the deserts of poverty a highway for the bounty of God. Doesn't that sound fantastic? You know, that, that we are true, that we are, I believe, in this teaching, we are to truly expect to see in our life whatever it is that we pray for. So in A Course in Miracles, it says that we are deciding every minute what we want to see, right? So we could see proof that our demonstration, our healing is happening, or we could see all the evidence why it's not happening. We decide every minute what we want to see in the world. We decide every minute what we want to see in the person in front of us. People have faith right now in many people, I'm sure none of you, but people have faith in, say, the coronavirus, right? So I think it comes down to something like this, that the error condition that we're dealing with in the world and our current level of faith are in a race. And when a symptom of dis-ease or a symptom of lack or a, cis, a, a, a symptom of disharmony shows up in our life, when that occurs, the error condition is winning, right? So Emma says, build my faith until it is so strong that the error condition dissolves and never returns again. See, people, people have faith in externals, but we, in the teaching of religious science, we have faith in the infinite invisible. We have faith in what is on the unseen side of life. All right, so yes, I know we're in this physical plane of existence here, but this is not all. Metaphysics means beyond the physical, and we believe that there is an unseen reality that is greater than what we see with our physical eyes. There's more on the other side of the veil, in other words, than we have access to right here with our five senses. senses. Um, so when I talk about, when we in religious science talk about praying to God, where is God? God is inside of us. God is inside every single person. God, God inside of all of us. So we're not rejecting. What we're doing is that we're, we're building. We're building our faith. So we have faith, our faith in God, it seems to me, if we say, oh, I have faith, I have faith in God, that must mean that we have faith in other people because where is God? God is everywhere and within every single person. Right? So A Course in Miracles, again, says that charity is to see a person in a state that is more advanced than where they currently are. Well, this is what we do in the science of mind all the time. We're always seeing people 
in that healed state. We're always seeing people, regardless of what the condition is right now, because we know conditions are always changing. So we see, in our mind's eye, that person is already happy. We see them already healthy. We see them abundantly supplied. We see them in a fantastic, loving relationship and creatively expressed. That's what we train ourselves to do in the science of mind. We are not trained to be exclusively guided by external appearances. Now, absolutely also, we teach in the science of mind that we temper healing with wisdom, right? So as my, one of my first teachers in the science of mind, Peggy Bassett, used to say, she said, we don't ask you to leave your brains outside the door when you come into a religious science church. And, and the more I study, the more I realize how true that is. So this is what we experience now is a wonderful case of rendering unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. We have to do things to be able to be in the world. But then we also render unto God that which is God's because we are spiritual beings walking a spiritual path. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's pretty safe to say that most of the people that we are dealing with on a, on a, on a daily basis, you know, that, that they're not all enlightened, right? Oh, by the way, neither are we, neither are you or me. They're, they're not perfect, right? And so when people show up as not perfect, if we have any tendency to be critical or judgmental, boom, here it comes. Hey, look who's at the party now. So it seems to me that really the true joy in life is, 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 is in experiencing. I mean, really being present for the journey. So what I've been working on this week is that when I'm walking my dog, I am really walking my dog, and I am loving the experience of walking my dog and being outside, and it's beautiful, and there's flowers, and there's sky, and there's trees, and just really being present in that experience. And then when I'm cooking dinner, I am really cooking dinner. My head is in the game of cooking dinner. I'm not thinking about the past or thinking about the future. I'm in the present moment putting love into the food that I am cooking. And on and on and on. See, I think part of this is that we have to be really, really present for what's unfolding in our life right now, to be in what we're doing fully. So when I'm meditating, I am really meditating. I'm not thinking about Eggs Benedict down the road. I'm meditating when I'm meditating. Now, you know, this is, not, this is not a race that we're talking about. It's more like, I like to think of it as that we are on a spiritual pilgrimage. And I do love the idea of spiritual pilgrimage. Many of you have traveled on pilgrimage with me, you know, because a pilgrimage means that it's a journey, you know, and the journey for us is back to an awareness of our oneness with God, back to what our soul knew before we incarnated and then forgot. So we perhaps experience setbacks, right? Who doesn't have some setbacks? But the thing is, for us as students of the science of mind, we have to always know that the God we believe in is bigger than any seeming setback. And what a setback is, is an opportunity, this is here to strengthen my faith. You know, that ad adversity makes me more determined, and I think that's what we have to do. We have to take this approach that any adversity is going to make me more determined. More determined what? In revealing a greater spiritual truth. You know, it is a myth, it is a fantasy to think that we could be here and not have stuff to work on. That we're going to get to a point where everything is just a breeze all the time. I think that's a fantasy. I really do. I think that as long as we are here on Earth, well, Earth is a school for our soul. You know, and so you know, we learn lots and lots of things. And one of the key things I think we learn is we have to love people first. And then once we love them, once our heart opens and the barriers come down and we love people, then we'll have greater insight and understanding into them. See, because flaws do not make us unlovable to God. Now, I grew up with a teaching where if you had flaws, you know, you were not on... Uh, good speaking terms with God. And now, of course, everybody has flaws. We all came here with stuff to heal and let go of, right? So you don't have to do anything or do something right, or you don't have to do the right thing to be loved by God. You are because God already loves you. If we could comprehend that, the only reason you exist is because God loves you so much, that's how you got into this fantastic club on earth.
right? So to say I have faith in God, I must have faith in other people regardless of how they express, regardless of how they show up in the world. Because, you know, we all have unhealed areas. And people in our lives show us where they're still unhealed. And sometimes people show up in our lives and they show us where we are still unhealed, you know? So my response should be, great. I get to heal. Oh boy, something else I get to heal. Because every time I heal something, the way it works is the universe brings newness into our life when we have healed something. You know, so faith brings us for, uh, br faith brings forward the light. Mm -hmm. And this is another way of saying I'm choosing to see the light in other people, wherever they are in the path. You know, the power of God is here, but it is expressed by and through people. See, sometimes I think we think that the power of God is going to operate in some way that has nothing to do with people. But, of course, the only way the power of God can operate is through each and every one of us. Every day is an opportunity for us to get closer to the light, closer to the spirit, closer to the activity of love. So many of us, I think, are, are really impatient. I know that has certainly been... Uh, true of my process, you know, and that's it. It is a process. It's not about arriving at a destination. We are all engaged in a spiritual process right now, and so I need to be patient with myself and other people because we are all works in progress. You know, and, uh, again, from A Course in Miracles, this line, I love this line, it says, infinite patience produces immediate results. That's one of those things I, that just makes my head hurt, you know, but I, but I really like that line because the idea of having infinite patience, oh my gosh. So Ernest says we live in a universe of love and law. This is what our teaching is, you know, that we, and, and, and all of us learn to work over time more intelligently with spiritual laws. But until we learn to work intelligently with them, sometimes we misuse or we violate those laws. But, you know, be very clear, we do not have a punishing God in the science of mind. We don't believe in a punishing God, but if we violate spiritual law, mm, there are consequences, right? It will feel like we are being punished. But you know, when you think about it, God, the infinite mind, is brilliant. Because even when stuff that is really undesirable is not our preference is happening on the face of the earth, babies keep getting born, and flowers are blooming, you know, and trees have fruit, and on and on and on, bodies get healed, and relationships get healed, and people create beautiful artwork. I mean, it's amazing. It's just, it's thrilling to think about how brilliant the infinite is. So if we build our faith, if we build our consciousness, I think, you know, what the natural, natural consequence of this is that we will learn to love each other. So I have three things for us today to do in the week ahead that I think will be really helpful. And the first one, and you can just do this for a week. Do this for a week, and if it doesn't work for you, you can completely let it go and say, Dr. Mark is bonkers. I'm never doing what he says again. But I think you'll like this. I really do. The first thing is this week, I'm asking us, let's just accept people exactly where they are. Because like us, they're growing as well. The second thing is let's bless the situation, whatever the situation we are in, exactly as it is. So if you're driving in the car and your kids are jumping up and down and they're making a lot of noise, just bless it. Just bless that situation. Don't try to make it different. The third thing I think, so we have accept people exactly where they are, bless the situation, whatever situation you are in, just bless it exactly as it is. And then the third thing to try this week is what if I gave other people what I want to receive? Okay? So we have three things. Accept people exactly where they are. Accept the situation exactly where it is. And give other people what I want to receive. So that might be, you know, love. It might be approval. It might be blessing. It might be gratitude. Whatever way, we can't go wrong. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, remembering that we are surrounded, we are filled with an infinite loving, intelligent principle. It's God, it's spirit, it's the energy of unconditional love. It's right here where we are. 
And so on behalf of all of us, recognizing that God is present and that we are all connected with each other, I stand on solid ground knowing, affirming, and humbly asking for God to take us to a deeper place. Because I know that the depth of our consciousness is infinite. So I claim for each and every one of us that we hear the call of God, the call of love, the call of spirit within us. And in all humility, we stand open, willing, receptive vessels to know today what it is we are here to do. Why God gave us life. So we include in our prayer our family members and friends, parents and children, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, everybody, the whole lineage. We bring them into our awareness. And we say God is right where they are. Healing is happening. Love is the order of the day. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So all of the things that pull at our attention, we know God is so much bigger and greater and more powerful and intelligent and loving than all of it. So we bless our church, we bless all churches. We bless synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that we all get raised up. We get to be healed. And so we claim it now. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say, thank you, God, I release this word. And so it is, together we all say, amen.